Hello and good day to all. It's time for the summary and some notes of Prometheus Bound, a play written by Aeschylus thousands of years ago. Even now it is offered by different universities of the world at graduate and master's level. So let's go for the summary of the drama. Now Aeschylus was an ancient Greek tragedian and is often described as the father of tragedy. Academic knowledge of the genre that is tragedy begins with his work and understanding of earlier Greek tragedy is largely based on inferences made from reading his surviving plays. Now according to Aristotle, he, that is Aeschylus, expanded the number of characters in the theatre and allowed conflict among them. Formerly, characters interacted only with chorus. Now, only seven of his estimated 70 to 90 plays have survived. There is a long-standing debate regarding the authorship of one of them, that is Prometheus Bound, with some scholars arguing that it may be the work of his son Euphorion. He was likely the first dramatist to present plays as a trilogy, that is a combination or a group of three plays or compositions which defect, depict the different aspect of a single theme. Now, Prometheus Bound, as we know, is an ancient Greek tragedy traditionally attributed to Aeschylus. It is based on the myth of Prometheus, a titan god of fire. Prometheus is best known for defying the, defying the gods by stealing fire from them and giving it to humanity in the form of technology, knowledge and more generally civilization. Since the final two dramas of the trilogy have been lost, the author's intention for the work as a whole is not known. Now the drama goes like this. The play opens with four characters on stage. Kratos and Bia, personifications of brute power and callous violence respectively, are engaged in fettering the silent Prometheus to a mountain side in Scythia and are assisted in the task by the begrudging blacksmith of the gods Hephaestus. Now, before the play begins, Kronos, the ruler of the pre-Olympian gods, that is the Titans, had been overthrown by insurgency led by Zeus. In this reward, Prometheus had sided with Zeus. As the new king, Zeus intended to destroy and replace humankind by covering the earth with snow. Prometheus frustrated this plan, showing humans the use of fire which Prometheus had stolen. Prometheus also taught humanity the arts for these acts of uh, defiance. Zeus intends to punish Prometheus by chaining him to a rock in the mountain sides of uh, Scythia. Now Zeus' two agents, that is Kratos, states that the punishment meted out to Prometheus is due to the fact that he stole fire, revealed the secret of how it is produced to humanity and dared to rescue her mankind from being annihilated by Zeus. Hephaestus shackles Prometheus to the mount and all three characters they exit, leaving Prometheus alone on the stage. Prometheus now speaks and appeals to the powers of nature, which are all around him. He calls on the wind, the mountains, the springs of water, the earth and the sun, to witness how he suffers unfairly. Prometheus becomes aware that something is approaching. He hears the beating of wings and inhales the scent of ocean. A chorus enters made up of the daughters of Oceanus. From within their deep sea caves they had heard the sound of the hammering and were drawn by curiosity and fear. They have arrived without stopping to put on their sandals. Prometheus hints to them that he is keeping a secret that will eventually cause him to have power over Zeus. The chorus thinks that he is speaking out of anger and may not actually be prophetic. Responding to their questions, Prometheus tells the story of his offence against Zeus, admitting that it was deliberate. He complains that the punishment is too harsh. Now, Prometheus' story is interrupted by the entrance of Oceanus, the father of the chorus of nymphs. Oceanus is an older god and has come to offer some sympathy and advice. Prometheus is proud and is hurt by this offer. Prometheus suggests that Oceanus should not intervene for his own safety. Prometheus tells him that if he attempts to intervene, it will only increase the punishment Prometheus is already suffering. Oceanus notes that his winged beast is eager to get home to his own stable and he exits. Now Prometheus speaks 
to the chorus of ocean nymphs. He asked pardon for his silence, which is because he was thinking about the ingratitude of the gods. He describes the positive things he had done for humans. Prometheus revealed that he had taught men all the civilizing arts such as writing, medicine, mathematics, astronomy, metallurgy, architecture and agriculture. He suggests that he will, he will one day be unchained but it will be due to the intervention of necessity which is something directed by fate, not Zeus. When asked how that will happen he keeps it secret. Now Io, the daughter of uh, Inachus, king of Argos, arrives. Io had become the object of Zeus' affections and desires, which angered Zeus' wife Hera. Io's father was advised to banish his daughter from his house, which he does. <coughs> Io then wanders the earth. Hera turns Io into a heifer, that is a cow, and the herder Argus drove him, drove her from land to land. After Argus was killed by Hermes, a new torment has inflicted on Io, a plague of gadflies. Now she has now arrived at the desolate place where Prometheus is changed. Prometheus is familiar with her story and she recognizes him as the great friend to humans. <coughs> the chorus doesn't know Io's past and, and persuades Prometheus to let Io tell them. The chorus is shocked and saddened and asks Prometheus to tell of Io's future wandering. He hesitates because he knows it will be painful. A brief dialogue reveals that Prometheus and Io are both victims of Zeus and that in the future Prometheus will eventually be freed by the descendants of Io. Prometheus asked Io to choose. Does she want to hear the rest of her own future or the name of her descendant that will rescue him? The chorus interrupts. They want both. Both answer for Io and one for themselves. Now Prometheus foresees that Io's wanderings will end at the mouth of the river Nile. There Zeus will restore her. She will give birth to a son, Epaphus, who will father 50 daughters, all of whom will murder their husband except for one, who will bear a line of kings, and another one who will rescue Prometheus from his torment. Prometheus' future rescuer is not named, but is known to be Hercules. Io bounds away. Now Prometheus proclaims that no matter how great Zeus may be, his reign will eventually come to an end. Prometheus' words have reached Zeus, whose messenger Hermes appears to urge Prometheus to reveal his secret about the marriage that threatens Zeus. Hermes reveals Zeus' own threats. The earthquake, the fall of the mountain that will bury Prometheus, the eagle that will attack Prometheus' vital organs. Now Prometheus states again that he knows all that is to come and will endure it. The end comes, earthquake, dust storm and jagged lightning whirlwind. As Zeus blasts Prometheus to Tartarus down in the bowels of the earth, Prometheus has the last line of the play, O oh, holy mother mine. O oh, you firmament that revolves the common light of all, you see the wrongs I suffer. Prometheus vanishes along with the chorus. This is the end of the summary of uh, Prometheus Bound. The play is very interesting and there must be something. Now you have to dig out what that interesting thing is because even now, after thousands of years, the play is offered and taught at the top universities of the world at graduate and master's level. What can be the important university questions, the theme of the play, characters, situations, we got to come to that, those number of questions in another video. Till then, take care of yourself. Goodbye.